Hello everybody, welcome to the ICSR series, the most demanded and awaited video for all the freshers and experienced people who are looking to improve their knowledge and trying to crack the interviews. I have received numerous requests from so many candidates and I have put in all the efforts to make it as simple as possible and easy to understand the concepts. The ICSR case processing is very important which makes the foundation and also the entry point in the drug safety and pharmacovigilance domain. If you understand and master this process very well, you will be able to advance and shape your career into aggregate reporting and so on. The ICSR case processing provides great potential and immense opportunities for freshers to start their career because most of the big pharmaceutical companies and biotech companies generally outsource this activity as these projects usually require huge resources to deal with large volumes of work. And also many organizations have to deal with the challenges of quality and productivity mainly due to the lack of proper training and concepts being not clear. So, Let's see in detail what is pharmacovigilance, definitions and terminologies used and where do we get the data, how it is collected, documented, processed and then reported to the regulatory authorities. What are the tools and the safety databases used? As many of you already know by now, my main focus is always on the practical aspects rather than just learning some theory part. My intention is to give you tons of information on all my videos. I think that I have covered a lot of important topics on my videos which I feel is more than sufficient for you to ace the interviews. Please watch all my videos till the end to get a proper and thorough understanding and comment if you come across any questions. Also at the end of each video. I have included a small mock interview session where I will be asking you the questions and you can try to answer which will help you practice your flow and improve your speaking skills. One, very, one more very important thing, if you are still in college or pursuing any of the streams in medicine, dentistry, pharmacy, PhD or any other life sciences degree and not sure of practicing and would like to know more about the career path and options in the pharma industry and you are in need of guidance, you can ask your college authorities or the concerned person to contact us by email or send an invite for a session to talk on pharmacovigilance and clinical research and the opportunities in the industry. Of course, the session will be entirely free and I will be happy to see you all and talk about in length about pharmacovigilance and clinical research. I hope you will enjoy all my videos. Welcome to the third video that is Individual Case Safety Report abbreviated as ICSR. Usually we call it as case processing. I have already covered the phases of clinical trials, drug discovery and development process of the US FDA in the first video and the definitions used in the pharmacovigilance in my second video. So I highly suggest you to go through those videos first, understand the terminologies before watching this and I also appreciate if you can give a like to this video. and share with your friends and colleagues and also subscribe so that you can watch all my upcoming videos. The reference document is the guideline on good pharmacovigilance practices GVP module 6 which includes collection, management and submission of reports of suspected adverse reactions to medicinal products. Let's see the introduction. This module of GVP module 6 addresses the legal requirements detailed in the directive and regulations 
which are applicable to competent authorities in member states, marketing authorization holders, and the agency as regards the collection, data management, and submission of individual reports of suspected adverse reactions, that is, serious and non serious, associated with medicinal products for human use authorized in the European Union. I hope by now you are familiar with what is an adverse event, what is adverse drug reaction, seriousness criteria, and also what is a SUSAR. If you do not have the clarity, please watch my previous video again so that you will be able to understand the next um, upcoming slides. Let's see what exactly is an ICSR. The individual case safety report is an adverse event report for an individual patient and is the source of data in pharmacovigilance. The main focus of ICSRs are reports from healthcare providers and patients in member countries of the WHO program. A WHO global individual case safety report database, that is, we call it as VGBase, is maintained and developed on behalf of the WHO by the UMC, which is Uppsala Monitoring Center. One of the purpose that pharmacovigilance provides to the public is to help them understand any possible risk associated with medicines or medical devices that have been approved for use and how they should be used safely and effectively. So let's see who reports this ICSR. So the primary source of the information is the person who reports the facts about an ICSR. Several primary sources such as health HCPs or healthcare professionals or consumers may provide information on the same case. In this situation, all the primary sources details including the qualifications should be provided in the ICSR and the primary source section should be repeated as necessary in line with the ICH E2B guidelines. So the ICSRs are reported either by the healthcare professionals or consumers. So who is a healthcare professional? In accordance with the guidance uh, guidelines of ICH E2D, a healthcare professional is defined as a medically qualified person such as a physician, dentist, pharmacist, nurse, coroner or as otherwise specified by the local regulations. Who is a consumer? In accordance with the ICH E2D, a consumer is defined as a person who is not a healthcare professional such as a patient, lawyer, friend, relative of a patient or carer, where the patient experienced a suspected adverse reaction in another country other than the one primary source, this information should be captured in the ICH E2B data element as the identification of the country where the reaction or event occurred. For example, if a patient from a country called Ireland is has taken the study drug and he is experiencing a, an anaphylactic reaction while traveling from Ireland to Spain. So in this instance, the primary source country is Ireland and the occurrence country is Spain. So please note this, we have to report where it has occurred and the, where is the patient from. Since a lot of events are reported by the consumers, we need to confirm whether it is medically right or is it really an adverse event report or not. So a consumer may provide medical documentations, for example, laboratory or other test data that support the occurrence of a suspected adverse reaction and which indicate that an identifiable healthcare professional suspects a causal relationship between a medicinal product and the reported adverse reaction. Similarly, a report may be notified by a medically qualified patient, friend, relative or carer of the patient. In these situations, the reported information is considered medically confirmed. So in short, if you are a healthcare professional, if you report an event, then it will be medically confirmed. If a patient or 
a consumer reports an event then it has to be verified by the healthcare professional to confirm it medically in the same way where one or more suspected adverse reactions initially reported by a consumer are subsequently confirmed by a healthcare professional the icsr should be confirmed it should be updated at the case level in the ICH E2B R2 or at adverse reaction level in accordance with the ICH E2B R3 guidelines for each subsequently medically confirmed suspected adverse reactions. So please do not worry about uh, the case level and what we need to report. Uh, first understand the concept and anyway you will be given the training on how to do the case processing using a safety database. Let's see ICSR in detail. ICSR refers to the format and content for the submission of an individual report of suspected adverse reactions in relation to a medicinal product that occur in a single patient at a specific point of time. So we need to know whether it is valid or invalid. So a valid ICSR should include at least one identifiable and identifiable reporter, one single identifiable patient, at least one suspect adverse reaction and at least one suspect medicinal product. So only valid ICSRs qualify for submission. So to be valid, the ICSR should have all these four criteria which we will be looking in detail. So, four minimum criteria in accordance with the ICH E2D, all reports of suspected adverse reactions should be validated before submitting them to the competent authorities to make sure that the minimum criteria are included in the reports. Four minimum criteria are required for ICSR validation. I am repeating again because this is the most commonly and uh, very frequently asked question in the interview. So please remember these four criteria that is one identifiable reporter, the person who reports it, one ident uh, single identifiable patient, the patient who has taken the drug, one or more suspected substance or medicinal product, the drug should be involved, one or more suspected adverse reaction, the event should be there. So please by heart this, this is very very important very frequently asked question in the interviews. Identifiable reporter. One or more identifiable reporter characterized by parameters such as qualification. For example, they can be physician, pharmacists, other healthcare professional, lawyer, consumer or other non-healthcare professional. Name, initial or address, for example, reporters organization department, street, city, state or province, postcode, country, email, phone number. So all these things should be captured to have an identifiable reporter. Local data protections, uh, protection law might apply. In line with ICH E2D, the term identifiable indicates that the organization notified about the case has sufficient evidence of the existence of the person who reports the fact based on the available information. In addition, in accordance with the ICH E2B, an ICSR is not valid for submission unless information concerning the qualification and the country is available for at least one reporter. To avoid over-reporting frauds, because if two companies or rivalries, they may tend to just call and may report whether it may be re the genuine uh, adverse event or just to create a lot of problems, they may provide fake data. So to avoid this, they have asked for all the information for an identifiable reporter. An ICSR is valid if the rules from ICH E2D regarding the reporter's identifiability and from ICH E2B regarding the reporter's qualification and country are fulfilled for at least one reporter. 
if information on the reporter's qualification is missing the notification should be considered by default as a consumer report if information on the reporter's country is not available the country where the notification was received or where the review took place should be used in the icsr whenever possible contact details for the reporter should be recorded to facilitate follow up activities however if the reporter does not wish to provide contact information the icsr should still be considered valid as long as the notified organization is able to confirm the case directly with the reporter so sometimes the reporter does not wish to give their contact details and we need to have that con contact details because if any information is missing in the case we need to follow up with them and get the information i have a, a slide on follow up which we will be seeing in detail to enable duplicate detection activities all parties providing case information or approached for case information should be recorded in the icsr when the information is based on second hand or hearsay the report should be considered non valid until it can be verified directly with the patient the patient's healthcare professional or a reporter who had direct contact with the patient so to avoid duplicate detection so we need to confirm if it is a hearsay case we need to confirm either with the patient or with the hcp or a doctor treating doctor or the reporter who had direct contact with the patient that was about the one single reporter now it is one single identifiable patient one single identifiable patient is characterized by at least one of the following qualifying descriptors either initials medical record number from general practitioner or specialist from the hospital or investigation date of birth age age group gestation period or gender in line with the ICH E2D the term identifiable refers to the possibility of verification of the existence of a patient based on the available information the information should be as complete as possible in accordance with the local data protection laws so what it meant is we need to be able to confirm whether it was a real patient or a genuine patient not some made up or fake data an icsr should not be considered valid for submission unless information is available for at least one of the patient qualifying descriptors furthermore as specified in the ich e2d in the absence of a qualifying descriptor a notification referring to a definite number of patients should not be regarded valid until an individual patient can be characterized by one of the aforementioned qualifying descriptors for creating a valid icsr the third criteria is one or more suspected sus substance or medicinal product so interacting substances or medicinal products should also be considered suspected so this is also one of the criteria the last one is one or more suspected adverse reaction if the primary source has made an explicit statement that a causal relationship between the medicinal product and the reported adverse event has been excluded and the notified competent authority or marketing authorization holder agrees with this assessment the report does not qualified as a valid icsr since the minimum information for validation is complete there is no suspected adverse reaction the report also does not qualified qualify as a valid icsr if it is reported that the patient experienced an unspecified adverse reaction and there is no information on the type of adverse reaction so to be considered a valid icsr the adverse reaction should be present and if the patient or the reporter says that the he or she experienced an unspecified adverse reaction then that is also not considered a valid icsr similarly the report is not valid 
if only an outcome or or consequence is notified and no further information about the clinical circumstances is provided to consider it as a suspected adverse reaction or the primary source has not indicated a possible causal relationship with the suspected medicinal product for instance a marketing authorization holder is made aware that a patient was hospital hospitalized or died without any further information in this particular situation medical judgment should always be applied in deciding whether the notified information is an adverse reaction or an event so i will just explain you with an example a report of sudden death would usually need to be considered as a case of suspected adverse reaction and the valid icsr should be submitted the lack of any of the four elements means that the case is considered incomplete and does not qualify for submission as an icsr competent authorities and marketing authorization holders are expected to exercise due diligence in following up the case to collect the missing data elements and follow up activities should be documented reports for which the minimum information is incomplete should be recorded within the pharmacovigilance system for use in ongoing safety evaluation activities a valid case of suspected adverse reaction initially notified by a consumer cannot be downgraded to a report of non related adverse event if a contracted contacted healthcare professional that is nominated by the consumer for follow up information subsequently disagrees with the consumer's suspicion in this situation the opinions of both the consumer and the healthcare professional should be detailed in the narrative section of the icsr this information can also be submitted in a structured manner in the ich e2b format which provides the means to transmit the degree of suspected relatedness expressed by several primary sources for each reported drug event combination so i just wanted to clarify a patient takes a drug and he says that i have had an adverse event or adverse reaction because of this of this drug only and we will have the causal as, uh, causal relationship will be probable or possible so when we do the follow up and contact the uh, hcp or the treating doctor the treating doctor may say that it is not because of this drug there might be some other drugs so to avoid confusion and to avoid bias so what we will do in the narrative is we will write that as per the consumer it is most likely or probably associated the causal relationship is probable but the hcp or the uh, treating doctor or the investigator has denied the cause causal relationship um, as positive or you can mention it as the investigator or the hcp did not agree with the causal relationship similarly a solicited report of suspected adverse reaction should not be downgraded to a report of non related adverse event when the notified recipient disagrees with the reasonable possibility of the causal relationship expressed by the primary source on the supplied medicinal product the opinions of both the primary source and the recipient should be recorded in the narrative section of the icsr or in the structured manner in line with the ich e2b the same principle applies to the icsr seriousness criteria which should not be downgraded from serious to non serious if the notified recipient disagrees with the seriousness reported by the primary source same uh, which i have already explained to you the same thing applies here also let's see how the follow up is done follow up when first received the information in suspected adverse reactions reports may be incomplete these reports should be followed up as necessary to obtain supplementary detailed information significant for the scientific evaluation of the cases this is particularly relevant for monitored events of special interest prospective reports of pregnancy cases notifying the death of a patient or 
cases reporting new risks or changes in the known risks this is in addition to any effort to collect missing minimum criteria for reports validation any attempt to obtain follow up information should be documented when we receive certain reports from the uh, documents there will be minimum criteria will be missed or the report may be incomplete so that time we will be doing the follow up so that we don't miss any cases which are critical and which needs to be reported the provision in icsrs of information on the patient's age is important in order to be able to identify safety issues occurring specifically in the pediatric or elderly population reasonable efforts should be made to follow up on icsrs where information on the patient's age or age group is initially not reported by the primary source similarly for suspected adverse reactions related to biological medicinal products the definite identification of a concerned products with regard to their manufacturing is of particular importance therefore all appropriate measures should be taken to clearly identify the names of the products and their batch numbers with respect to this it is recommended to specify in the case narrative if information on the batch number has been requested when it is missing in the initially submitted icsr this is about the introduction to the icsr so four minimum criteria in the next video i will be talking about collection of the reports from various sources how do we get the icsrs and where do we get the uh, reports from another detailed video will be made on what should be reported and how are these icsrs submitted to the regulatory authorities and what are the time frames for the us and eu so hopefully i think the concepts are clear so if you have any questions please leave a comment below in the video these are the common interview questions freshers basically the same questions are asked everywhere so what is an icsr who can report an icsr what are the four minimum criteria for an icsr they can also ask how do, when do you consider the icsr as a valid icsr and when is an icsr considered invalid if it does not meet the four criteria then it is considered invalid so who is a hcp what is a medically confirmed case what should be documented in the narrative so these are very common questions so be prepared with them so make proper preparation understand the concepts well if you don't understand anything please go through the video again i think uh, i have made it i have tried my best to make it as easy as possible many of them are not aware that i provide the advanced training programs on the aggregate reports or the periodic reports this is the details here are the details of the reports dsur psur pbrer signal detection and management as well as rmp and medical literature monitoring or literature surveillance if you or your friends or colleagues are interested to attend a session they can register by logging on to your website www.globalplacosolutions.com under contact us there is a registration option and once you register you will receive all the details about our upcoming training sessions by email i hope that the video was informative and helpful and i hope that it will guide freshers and successfully crack the interviews please like subscribe and share this video with your friends and colleagues and thank you very much for watching